let's just get our feet wet with creating a BI semantic model using Power Pivot for Excel. So we won't go into tremendous detail on calculations. We'll do that in later lessons, but let's just uh, let's just get a start. So here I'm in Excel, and I have installed the Power Pivot add-on. So I have the uh, the add-in ribbon. I'm going to launch the Power Pivot window. And that will bring up uh, all of my design tools that I can use. I'm going to pull in some data just from a relational database. So I have several databases in SQL Server. And I'm going to select one of those. The database is the Contoso sample data set that you might be familiar with. And I'm going to give it a friendly connection name called Contoso. And this uh, data is on a server called lab sql1 and if I put in the server name and then drop down this list it'll show me what it found on that server and Contoso Retail DW that's the database name I can test that it says it's fine and then I'll click next so I get a choice here of um, just selecting tables to uh, and views to import the data or write queries write queries might be a little more efficient because I can choose just the columns I really want uh, but um, so we're just getting started, so we'll just select a list of tables. I'll click Next. And I'm going to import not everything in this database. Uh, I just want to get started, so I'm going to choose just a few dimensions, like the, the, the sales channel and the date. And um, we'll choose the product and store. No, oh, promotion. Store. and then our sales table. Okay, so I've selected the tables I want. Um, now, we can give these things names that we like. So dim channel, you know, we know that's a dimension table and, and, and we have this naming convention in our data warehouse, but our, our users want friendlier names than that. So I'm just going to strip off the, uh, the leading uh, nomenclature here to get something that's a little more user-friendly and after I do that go ahead and click finish now when I click finish it's actually going to go and read that data pull it in from the data from the data warehouse and load it into my local memory within my workstation so again as we looked at uh, the VertiPack and how it stores data in memory that's what's happening right now we're transferring this data into RAM Okay, so we've transferred all the data. Um, some preparation is um, completed, and we can, if we click on the details, it'll tell us what it was doing. And what it was doing is a, a kind of a cool feature of uh, Power Pivot. It was intelligently looking at the data, trying to figure out what the relationships relationships were between the tables. So that's already done for us. So we can just click OK. When I close that, I have this kind of tab view of things and I can see in my sales table I have 3.4 million rows of data there which is more than I can usually fit in Excel and I can look at this in a table view which users who use Excel will probably find this extremely comfortable uh, because it looks just like Excel if you're more of a, data boy, a database person like me you might find this diagram view a much uh, much more familiar where you can see the entities and their relationships you can choose either way that you want to look at it both both ways are alright now that my data is pulled in the relationships are established um, there's nothing more I need to do in order to have this data ready to be queried so it's it's ready now though and I can uh, go in and, and use a pivot table interface to slice and dice the data just as it is now in later lessons we'll add more intelligence to this and calculations and relationships hierarchies all kinds of things but uh, but it's it's good enough to get started with so I'll just press the little Excel button flip over to Excel and I'll drop if I drop down this pivot table I can insert a pivot table or a chart um, just for simplicity sake I'll insert a pivot table and I can put it in the existing worksheet which is fine because there's nothing here yet anyway and what I get is a nice pivot table um, that many Excel users are going to be used to and what I'm just I'm just going to look at a basic basic query so I'll choose sales amount and if I want to slice that by something maybe I'd like to slice that by calendar year now you'll notice that when I 
clicked on calendar year, Power Pivot saw that was a number. It didn't understand that that actually is a year I want to slice by, so it put it into the values. I can just quickly fix that by dragging my calendar year over to row labels, and then I will get my sales by year. And perhaps I'd like to look at by year by channel description. I can do that. Maybe I'd like the description on the lab, on the columns. I can do it that way as well. So just a very simple, simple way of bringing some data into a semantic model in Power Pivot and querying it. And what I'm going to do next is just save that. And I'm going to call this Workbook Contosa 1. And as we talked about, the data is stored in the workbook. So when I save that, I'm saving not just this layout and not just the definition but the data as well so that data that we imported from the data warehouse is actually in the workbook and if we wanted to look at that to see what that looks like see this workbook is 86 megabytes so that's bigger than a average spreadsheet but also smaller than the average database with 3 million rows now an office file is actually a zip file so if I just rename that as a zip file I just want to show you that if I drill down into this um, this workbook into this custom data folder I'll find this file called item one dot data that's virtually all of the data size and, and notice the, the compression ratio is zero percent because that's a compressed backup file of all of the data that uh, that is then used by power pivot for Excel next time I would open this part of the power pivot add-in would go into this file grab that data file restore it into RAM and we'd be querying away with that